with a short story called Christmas Change. As the Christmas season approached, I'd been thinking of all the exorbitant and self-centered ways people often celebrated. But what was Christmas about? Feeling strongly impressed to make a change in our family, I prayed that the Holy Spirit would guide me as I broached the topic. At the dinner table, I asked my 10-year-old daughter how she felt after Christmas presents were opened. She thought about it for a minute and said, Mom, I always feel a great letdown. There's so much excitement about the idea of presents, but after opening them, I just feel empty. That was music to my ears. My husband, nodding, apparently agreed. I'm feeling the same thing, I said. I've been feeling like we need to do more for others and less for ourselves. Our needs are met. We are blessed beyond what we could ask or think. This year, I'd like to adopt a family from the Salvation Army and buy gifts for them. None for us, except for maybe our new traditional or our traditional new pajamas for Christmas Eve and a family board game. How would you feel about that? To my surprise, my entire family was on board. They thought the idea was great. So I called the Salvation Army and I asked them for a family to adopt. The lady told me they had actually two families left and asked me to choose one. Are you kidding? How could I only choose one? if the other family isn't chosen? What if one family has to go without? No, we must take both families. Later that day, I got an email with the specifics of what the families wanted. One family had a little girl who wanted anything Hello Kitty. One had a dad who needed a new coat, a nice shirt and tie, and both families said they wanted their kids' needs taken care of first. So we set the budget one that most likely would have been sent, spent on ourselves. We waited in eager anticipation for our shopping day. We decided to shop on December 24 and wrap the gifts at the Salvation Army. Then we'd go home, have smoothies, and play games together. As our shopping began, we decided to split up. As you can imagine, the store was packed. My husband went to look for a skateboard and buy clothes in the specific sizes. Our daughter and I picked out candy canes, a tin of cookies, popcorn, a nice shirt and pants for the mom. When my husband was done, we all began looking for Hello Kitty items, but there really wasn't much that year. We found lip balm, hair clips, and a sweatshirt, nothing else. But we wanted to get more for her, so we called around to other stores and we went to those stores. We ended up getting a game and socks and Christmas stocking and a watch. We were all so happy buying these items for her. We also got the dad nice work clothes, and the other kids from both families all got the things that they asked for. It was really a lot, but we were all having so much fun getting all the things on the list, we, we lost track of the cost. At each store, we shopped for both families and got everything on their lists. Plus, for our family, we purchased groceries, a set of clearance red decorative Christmas glasses, and a board game. Somehow, with God's help, we all stayed in budget. We hurried to the Salvation Army. The ladies there helped us wrap the gifts and put them into bags for the families to pick up. It was so much fun. We kept on giggling and talking about how we were sure they were going to love this or love that. Once we finished, we walked out to our car, and just then, a family drove up. Was it one of our families? It had to be. All the other gifts had been picked up. Theirs was the only one that had not yet been delivered. We smiled and waved as we drove off. What a wonderful feeling we had. That evening, along with generous portions of popcorn and smoothies, we basked in the glow of giving. We kept smiling, and over and over, one, another, uh, one or another of us exulted, this is our best Christmas a couple days after that special Christmas, we got an email from the Salvation Army. One of the families for whom we'd purchased gifts wanted to express their deepest thanks. They said, it's like they knew us. That's how personal the gifts felt to them. We didn't know them, but God did. He led us to the right decisions for them. He put the right thoughts and actions in us, and through him, we blessed others for him. 
Years later, we still talk about that joy. We've continued that tradition of doing for others, and each year, we're so glad we made that Christmas change. This Christmas, I hope each one of us will follow the star. I don't know how that light will guide you, but I want to think about myself less this holiday season and think about others more. I want to look for ways to make the circle of God's family bigger and to think about how I can help meet the needs of others. I hope you have a blessed and a safe Christmas. Um, let's have a prayer together before we all go our separate ways. Loving Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that 2,000 years ago, um, you gave the greatest gift we could ever receive. Jesus, we are eternally grateful, not only for your birth, but for your life, for your death, for your resurrection, and for what you're doing for us now and forevermore. I pray that you will continue to guide us and give us opportunities to let others know how good and loving you are. This is our prayer. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a Merry Christmas.